Earth is my planet. So what is up guys? It has been a minute since I dropped a video for the simple fact that we have been in a three month drought in Houston, Texas. The temperature has been 100 to 106 degrees consistently for like the last few months. I would always get questions about how do I water plants and I'll always be like, I plant native plants. I don't really need to water too, too much. Let's just say three months without a drop of rain has been extremely abnormal. And I'm starting to think that I need to predict the abnormalities in my gardening and plant selection because we've had two freezes in three years that have been brutal on my garden and then three months of drought 100 plus weather almost every single day and uh, my plants have gone through the ringer but with that being said i have still been stopping still been shopping and still been finding and buying clearance plants so i'm going to share with you guys that footage and today after about a month and a half of waiting i'm going to put those plants in the ground it's been so hot it's almost been impossible to work outside but now fall is in the air it's a little bit cooler so it's time Let's go guys. I'm gonna take y'all shopping with me first and foremost, show y'all what I got. So we have arrived at the first locality, which is Lowe's, the clearance section. And this Lowe's is actually popping with plants. So we're gonna see what we're gonna get. I'm thinking of getting one of these Osmanthus fragrance for that evergreen look that will somewhat block the house. So this dude is definitely on my shopping list to say the least. It's $50 retail, so it'll be $25 half off. I definitely gonna grab one of these. Let's see what else they have. This Guara, nine bucks. These will be four dollars. Got the purple heart plants. I kind of do need some more of these. I would definitely have grabbed these sombrero coneflowers. However, they're ten dollars and ninety eight cents, so they're gonna be seven yeah, bucks. Man. So that is not even a good deal in my opinion. It's only like four dollars off. They got me messed up. Autumn sages, also native, but. I planted a ton of these and I don't know why, the ones I get from Lowe's do horribly. Now I also am gonna grab this beautiful specimen, the mood ring podocarpus. All right, so this is also called like a Japanese U if I am correct, but I need some plants that are evergreen to cover up my fences in the backyard because once all of my fruit trees lose their leaves in the winter, my garden kind of looks dead and I need that year long interest. So I think this mood ring will be cool. And y'all can see you got that red new growth. It's 11 bucks. Now I usually don't grab house plants all too often, but they have the black ZZ plants, the Raven. ZZ. Ooh, sounds even better. These are going to be $10. The retail is 20. I got my mom one of these. And ever since then, I was like, I got a twin with my mother. Now, one last plant that I'm going to grab is this tiny tank dwarf cast iron plant. It is evergreen. It has a nice tropical look. So I'm going to try and find the most healthy looking specimen to grab. It's going to be $11. So as y'all can tell, I'm going for the evergreen tropicals. And maybe I'll get some fruit trees today too. So we are here at the Houston Garden Center where I am grabbing some fruit trees. Hold on, I know you guys wanna see my eyes, mate. Ew. Uh, they're 30% off regular price, which is really good. Now I already have two of these varieties, which is the Florida Home and the Leconte pear tree. And they both have grown voraciously. I pruned them recently, but man, they are popping and percolating. But for 30% off, this pear tree will be about 50 bucks and they have the pineapple pear variety which only requires 150 chill hours chill. and i could wait till they're half off but i'd rather grab it now because it's the last one and the branching structure is perfect look at the lateral branches on it in opposite directions these will be perfect to form a nice tree that'll look aesthetic and bear some fruit like look at this one imagine fruit just on the edge of this absolutely crazy when most of them look like witches brooms i definitely do prefer this one it's the last one they got so i'd rather not wait on it and have someone else scoop it up so here we go y'all we are back y'all have seen my selections and it's time to get some of the plants in the ground and the first one i actually did plant about a month ago and it was my pear tree that I purchased. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that footage right now. It was like a 100 degree day when I planted that. And let's just say my camera overheated expeditiously. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in right here. It'll get big. I'm gonna let it get as tall as possible to provide shade on the house. It's gonna be about eight feet from the wall. And I'm gonna let it get tall and bear a ton of fruit. 
hopefully. So this was the ideal spot for me to plant this tree because I don't mind if it gets really huge and will shade the house, but check out how dry and hot it has been in Houston, man. Dude, it is so dry. Look at the chunks of clay, man. They're like rock. Now just to reiterate why I'm going with the pear tree over an avocado and a citrus is because I've planted them in this area before and they've gotten smoked by the cold snap. So having a deciduous fruit tree that loses its leaves and can survive any cold temperatures is ideal. And furthermore, pear trees are the only fruit trees I planted in the last three years that have produced edible, palatable fruit for your boy. So I'm going hard with the pears down here in Houston. And this one looks vivacious, it looks healthy, or at least that's the case the day I put it in the ground. Now back to the current present moment, this is what the tree is looking like. It has been obliterated by the heat. It has lost a ton of leaves, but it still does have some in great condition. I have been drenching this in water about once a week. But again, that's why planting things in the heat of the summer or even the heat of the fall here in Texas is not necessarily the best idea. But regardless of the fact, things are starting to cool down. So hopefully everything I put in the ground today will fare much better. And it finally did rain, so the soil is actually loose enough and malleable enough to dig holes in. So what I'm going to go ahead and plug in the ground first and foremost is my southern wax myrtle. Now this is a native plant. It is absolutely gorgeous. 10 to 12. 12 feet tall about eight or six to eight feet wide and I need some foundation plants so I need some plants that can help block off the wall of my house behind me really create that jungle like look which I want out here and it's evergreen so that way in the winter time when a lot of these plants lose their leaves and go deciduous my garden still has interest so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy in right against the house probably in the gap behind the tree so let's get it. So as I throw in the southern wax myrtle, the reason why I'm planting it right next to the foundation is because it's a shrub so its roots won't destroy the house and it is a native plant so it greatly benefits birds with the berries it produces and is a larval host plant for multiple types of butterflies such as the banded hair streak. So I'm on this side of the garden. I also want to plug in another absolute beauty that I purchased. Now this one I did not get on sale, but it's a native. It's amazing and it serves the purpose of being evergreen, blocking the house and providing immense wildlife benefits. This is the Ilex vomitoria or the Yopon holly, but this one is different. This one is called like gold dust debris or something, but the berries evidently turn yellow when normally they are red. So that's exciting. And this dude will maintain his leaves during the winter time. So it'll look good. It'll grow tall, block the wall. And that's all I need. Let's get it in. Now this particular specimen and cultivar of plant I got at Buchanan's native plant nursery. It was 40 bucks, so not the cheapest, but this is a female plant. Yopon hollies are dioecious, so you need a male, which will be like the dwarf Yopon hollies they sell at Home Depot or box stores, and a female to produce fruit. Birds love eating the fruit. It attracts butterflies into the garden, and it grows from Virginia all the way down to Texas, so this is a good one for sunny and shady conditions. All right, y'all, so we have entered my backyard and I'm throwing in another Yopon Holly. This one also, I think, is of the golden ilk and variety. Now, I'm putting it against the fence line again to create that evergreen barrier. So that way you're not really seeing as much fence and you're seeing more plants and it'll grow and hopefully block my neighbor's windows as well. They get about 25 feet tall. It is going to be reaching for the sun because it's gonna be underneath this oak tree canopy. So we're gonna see how well it actually performs. We have one pretty much in full sun, one in a lot of shade. So uh, this will be a nice little test and I'll report back in like a year or so with the progress. So typically to produce berries, Yopon hollies need about half a day of sun. So I truly will be able to see if this guy is productive with its fruit and I hope it is because I'm trying to see as many birds as possible all up in my garden. Now it is time to throw in the Osmanthus fragrance. Now this plant was in much better shape when I originally purchased it. The leaves have fallen off. It's been blasted by afternoon sun, which it doesn't like. This is a partial sun plant. It likes three to six hours of morning sun, ideally. And in the area I'm planting it, it's gonna be in a good amount of shade. So hopefully it motivates it to grow taller and to get over this fence. That will be the ideal purpose. I'm gonna put it in between two of my plum trees 
and hopefully it does again serve the purpose of blocking off the fence and lending to a jungle garden aesthetic with this evergreen style this is non-native but it was cheap and it serves a purpose so let's get it in i had to dig the biggest hole for this now as mantis fragrance can grow 15 to 30 feet tall and it does like full sun or partial shade it hates afternoon sun and really hot climates such as the one i am in so it definitely is planted in a decent location in my humble opinion now this can grow from zone 7b to 9b and it is originally native to cambodia and thailand now i'm adding all these sticks around the base because my dogs run this fence line and i really do not want them to trample my freshly acquired clearance plants shame on you puppies but with that being said, Osmanthus fragrance gets its name from its super fragrant flowers, which light up the backyard, nasally speaking. So I'm glad to have this guy in the ground and its leaves have recovered from being blasted with sun to now being lush and fertile. Now in this corner, I'm throwing in a mootering podocarpus. Now this requires full to partial sun. This area doesn't necessarily qualify, but I take more risks with plants I get half off. And if it does take, this will form a nice evergreen structure right along this pole. Now the mootering podocarpus can grow up to 66 feet tall from zone 7A all the way to 9B. It likes a dappled sun. So I think this one will do well. Now it's called a mootering because this particular cultivar does have a reddish hue on its new growth which i guess will be cool i have one of these in the front yard that is large in a similar lighting condition so i hope this one will similarly fill the role of blocking off my fence and really creating a lost jungle-like atmosphere when you step foot into my backyard now last and certainly not least i am throwing in this little dwarf cast iron plant i forget what it was called it's called like some mini tank or something of that nature. I'm gonna go ahead and put one of these in. I already have planted another one the day I planted my pear tree. These are evergreen, they are from Japan, they are non-native, but I need something with that tropical look, kind of a broad leaf that is hardy in the heat and the freeze, and these qualify. So cast iron plants can grow in zone six all the way to 10. And I see these spammed in New Orleans underneath giant oak trees because they are perfect for a dry soil site that receives a ton of shade and not much sun. Being able to withstand the freezes and the heat makes this a perfect candidate for my backyard garden. And it does look tropical and unstoppable and overall i'm satisfied with my tiny tank cast iron plant purchase baby and all right guys the last plant is in the ground and that is a wrap on the day number one thank you guys for the patience for waiting for this video i'm pretty much going to stock up in the spring do some other maybe indoor plant type of content in the summer and now that it is fall i can be back outside back on the grind, back planting. So if you guys enjoyed, please smash the like button. If you have any comments, concerns, questions, suggestions, leave them down below in the comment section as well. And thank you guys. And again, always remember, Earth is my planet. Earth is my planet. It's a great time to get out there and actually find some plants that are half off. So check the garden centers, find something that's hardy, get them in if you can. And until next time, peace. Leaving a bloody life, I roost And I'm in it to win it, so I'm somebody that you should get used to.